So why don't we uh, run through this relative motion a little bit here. Um, let's have a look at uh, two cars moving on a highway. So if you've ever uh, been going down the road and it, maybe you're on, on the ramp coming onto the highway or maybe you're on the highway looking at the ramp, but if you look at a car, you know, that in either position from the one you're not in, you could see the relative motion of that car with respect to you. So sometimes, uh, you know, when I'm going down the highway, I might be here and I'm heading down the road and I'm looking over at this car that's merging to see how they're going to fit in with me. And what they appear to do be doing from my point of view is approaching me from the side. Okay. Because we're both moving about the same speed north, but they're moving west and I'm not. So they kind of appear to be coming right at me. So uh, <coughs> so let's have a look at this mathematically and see what we can do with this to, to describe the relative velocity. Let's start with that and see how we would go about doing that. All right, so what we've got here is we've got uh, car A is going down the road at 90 kilometers per hour, which is 25 meters per second. Car B is merging onto the highway on that curved ramp. Car B has a velocity of 72 kilometers per hour, 20 meters per second. Let's find the velocity of car A with respect to car B. Okay, so if you're in car B looking at car A, how is car A moving with respect to you? Okay, so that's the velocity of B with respect to, or excuse me, velocity of A with respect to B. Okay, so you're in B in this case. You're looking at A. What is A doing with respect to you? So that's the velocity of A with respect to B. So if we're going to write up a vector term for velocity of A with respect to B, why don't you write the subscripts on that, okay? Put it over there on the right, if you would. So we got V for velocity, and then we got A with respect to B. So when you're writing these out, it's just like you uh, say the English sentence, A with respect to B would be A slash B. Okay. Now, if we know the velocity of A and B as we do here, why don't you write up the rest of the equation? How, how, how would we find the velocity of A with respect to B? What equation would we use to, to accomplish that? Now, the way I remember this is I set it up like a fractional equation. And I just think I'm multiplying the fractions together. So I've already got A with respect to B. That would be a fraction like that. And the other two I'm going to use are A and then B. So I think if I put A over here in an equal sign and a B, that'll work. Because if I think I'm multiplying fractions, I can cancel the Bs out is what I do. So what I want there is VA equals VB plus VA with respect to B. That's how I do that, okay? All right, now once I, we get with that, we got any questions on that? Okay. Now, once I've got that, I just fill in the terms for VA and VV. Okay, I just need to develop those. 
There, and, and the important thing here is you use vectors when you do this stuff, okay? This, this, doing this is all about vectors. So you want to be sure that you're using vectors when you, when you do this, okay? So what do we got here? We, we're going to need a couple vector expressions, okay? So let's have a look. All right, so um, I think VA is pretty easy, isn't it? So VA, see, it's just going due north, straight up. So that's going to be 0i plus 25j, right? So that's the easy one. Now VB will be a little bit trickier because it's at an angle. Now, when I want to get the angles for this stuff, I always I always draw pictures when I'm doing geometry. Okay. Now I got 53 degrees there, and this angle down below here is parallel, so that's 53 also. Okay. Parallel angles are congruent. I think is a fancy way of saying that they're the same. Now what that is, if I think in terms of uh, whatever coordinate system I want, let's say normal tangential, this would be the normal axis here, right? Now the normal and tangential axes are perpendicular to one another, so that's a 90 in there. So what I'm going to do there, I'm going to take 90 minus 53, and that'll get me 37. So that velocity of B is going up left at 37 degrees. Okay. You all okay with that? And the one thing, when I'm doing geometry, I don't do it intuitively. I draw a picture. You know, if I can prove it with a picture, I'm confident in what I'm doing. And, you know, I, I, just in, you know, when I was uh, working and doing all that stuff, I mean, some stuff in school you use a lot, some you use less. Geometry I used a fair amount. You know, I'm a civil engineer and just laying stuff out. Good practical, solid knowledge of geometry is a good thing to have, in my opinion. Okay. All right, so up left, 37 degrees. So now I can get a vector expression for VB. And what do I got? So I, I'm with the horizontal there, so that 37 degrees is with the horizontal. I'm going to the left, so that'll be negative for left, cosine 37 times 20. And that's the I component. And then I'm going up, so that'll be sine 37 times 20. And that'll be the J. Okay. So that's how I can get a vector expression for B. First, I have to find the angle that the VB makes at the horizontal, and then I just use a little bit of trig. I'm going left, I'm going up. Left means negative X, up means positive Y. Everybody doing okay with that? So when I get that figured up, I got VA is 0i plus 25j. VB then comes out to be negative 16i plus 12j. So now I can put all that stuff into a vector equation. So VA is 0i plus 25j. VB is negative 16i plus 12j. And then VA with respect to B, I don't know. So I just go VABX, I plus VABY, J. Okay. And then I just pull out the different pieces that I want to work with. I can pull out the I's and I'll get 0 is equal to negative 16 plus VA with respect to BX. So VA with respect to BX is 16. And then I can do the same thing with the J's. Keep in mind that a 2D vector equation is really two equations kind of wrapped into one, an X equation and a Y equation. So I'll pull out the J's. 
25 is equal to 12 plus VABY. So I can get VABY. <clears throat> Right there. <clears throat> so that's how I would approach this one. Okay. So the total VAB is sixteen I plus thirteen J. So I'm good with that. So the V A B Y, mm -hmm. that's how that's how someone sitting in car two, uh, A would be saying car B moving, right? Um, no, this is A with respect to B. Oh, okay. A so we're in B. I was I a. was thinking B with respect to yeah, A. Yeah, so it should be the opposite of it. Just okay. be the negative of what we just got. So I was thinking, yeah, okay. that's exactly what I was thinking. Right. So yeah, you can kind of see that, right? Because A has a higher uh, velocity northward than B does. So with respect to B, A is going faster down the road. Yeah. But then B is moving to the left, which is west. A is not moving in the X direction at all. So from the point of view of B, A is getting closer. Okay. So yeah, next time you're merging, uh, have a look at this. You know, you'll kind of see it. I think. Okay. I guess. Yeah, I guess you call it that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Same idea. Yeah. Just different physical setups, but same idea. Yeah. Okay. All right, so that's a relative velocity vector, so I can do all the vector stuff for that. I can take square root of some of the squares, get the magnitude of velocity, and I can take the uh, arctan of y over x and get the angle there. Okay. All right. Now, why don't we have a look at the acceleration then? Now, this one's a little trickier because, you know, acceleration has a little bit more to it. So we got the same velocities, but now we'll give the acceleration information too. Remember, acceleration is a change in velocity. So what we got here is um, the speed of A is decreasing at negative 0.9 meters per second squared. So that's going south at 0.9 meters per second squared right there. Now B is merging onto the highway. B has a velocity of 20 meters per second. The speed of car B is increasing at 2.1 meters per second squared. So that's tangential. Okay, that's right along the curve. Let's find the acceleration of A with respect to B. So again, we're in B looking at A. We want to see what B is doing. Okay. So what we want here is a relative acceleration equation. It's a lot like, it looks an awful lot like a relative velocity equation. Just use A, a instead of B. And that's about it. So, you know, when you read this, acceleration of A with respect to B you just write the letters in the same order that they're written for the subscript there. And then you've got that expression there. And you just want to get the uh, algebra set up in the right way. So we're going to have a sub a is a sub b plus that. And the subscripts would multiply out in the correct sort of way. All right, here we go. All right, now the geometry and, and calculating these get a little bit more involved, so let's have a look. Now, a sub a, there's not much to that. Um, this is what, zero i 
minus 0.9j, right? That's about all there is going on with that. Now, a sub b has a tangential and a normal component, see, because it's going in a curve. All right. So what we got to do there is get an expression for a sub b and tangential and normal coordinates. That would be step number one. So we'd want to set those up. Remember, the normal tangential coordinates are on the object. So the normal's going that away, and the tangential's doing that. And so that tangential component looks pretty straightforward to me. That's just 2.1. Now the unit vector is the tangential unit vector. <laughs> 2.1 times the use of t. Now the normal vector, what that is, is the velocity squared. And the velocity of that is, is it 20? Yeah, it's 20. So that'll be 20 meters per second, quantity squared, divided by the radius, right? Because that's the normal acceleration. Radius is 120 meters. And that'll be u sub n is what that'll be. That's the normal component. Like so. And you can just work the numbers out and you'll get a sub b, 2.1 for the tangential and 3.33 for the normal. And that's the you know most effective way to quickly get an expression written for that acceleration of the car that's on the curve there, okay? Now the next thing we want to do though is get that and turn it into an xy coordinate system, okay? Cuz we got normal and tangential but we want to do our relative stuff. We want uh, xy, which is an ij coordinate system, you know, ij unit vectors, I should say. So again, we got to do a little bit of trigonometry here. So what do we got? Just like before, we got 53 degrees down here, and that leaves 37 degrees up above. Now that's a 90, so we got 180 total degrees in that straight line. We've already used up 37 up and to the left for the tangential axis there. We've got a 90 degree angle in there, so that's going to leave us back again with 53. So this normal goes upright at 53 degrees. Okay. And those are just parallel angles if you want to do it that way too. I mean, however you get it, you get it. So what you got to do here is take each of these components, the tangential and the normal, and do the trigonometry to get them put onto the xy axis system. So for the tangential, it's up left at 37, so that's minus cosine 37 times 2.1, and that's the i. Then plus sine 37 times 2.1, and that's the j. So that's negative 1.68i plus 1.26j. And then the normal's upright at 53. So cosine 53, 3.33i, plus sine 53, 3.33j. So that's 2i plus 2.67j. So what I'm doing there, I'm just taking each of these vectors, the normal and the tangential, and I'm breaking them up into x and y coordinates. That's all I'm doing there. And then to get the total, x, y vector, I just add them up. Okay. So if you want to get 
fancy and call that coordinate transformation, but it really is just doing some trigonometry and breaking those things up into X and Y components. That's all we're doing. And then we're adding everything together. So add up all the I's, add up all the J's. You get the total acceleration of B on that XY coordinate system, which is what you want, see? Doing all right with that? Doing good. So we got AA and we got AB. So just like we did with the velocity, we can find the net. Just uh, lay them out in vector equations and solve for a, a, sub, a, a with respect to BX and a, a with respect to BY. All right, so we just pull out the uh, x terms. So that's 0 i for a sub a, 0 0.32 i for a sub b, and the unknown a, a with respect to bx. Solve for the a, a, bx. It's negative 3.2, 0 0.32, I'm sorry, negative 0 0.32. And then do the same with the j's. So negative 0.9. 3.393 and a a with respect to by solve for uh, the relative a a with respect to by put them together into a vector expression it's negative 0.32 i minus 4.38 4.83 j square root of sum of the squares will get you the total you can find the angle too by doing inverse tangent they're just vectors you know just like any sort of thing Okay. So that's relative motion there. Um, it's an introduction to it. We'll actually come back to it and we'll do kind of a machine analysis with it. We'll look at uh, linkages and things like that as they rotate and move and analyze them. Okay. So we all right with that? All right, so that's uh, what we cover here on basic motion. Okay. So we looked at some of the calculus stuff and the algebraic stuff for straight line motion and simple curve motion. And then, then we started to get into circular type motion with XY coordinates and normal tangential coordinates and spiral motion with polar coordinates. And then we just did pulleys and, and this relative motion. And that's called kinetics, or kinematics, I'm sorry, kinematics. What we're going to look at now is kinetics. We're going to look at what causes the motion in the first place. We haven't really covered that so far. All we've really looked at is just, you know, just, uh, this uh, particle is moving in such and such a fashion. We haven't really described what causes the motion. And that's what we'll start doing now is looking at that. So let's have a look at friction first. Okay. And what we're going to start doing is looking at F equals MA, which is one of Newton's laws. Number two, I think. So if we apply an unbalanced force to an object, it will start to accelerate. And it will accelerate in line with the force and in proportion to the force. So if I have an object and I apply a force to it, I'll change its velocity if it's not in equilibrium, if there's nothing to counteract that force I apply. So we turn that into an equation, F equals MA, right there, which means force is mass times acceleration. 
So force is how hard you push or pull. Mass is the amount of atomic material in the object. And acceleration is a change in velocity. Right? Now a special case of that is weight equals mass times gravity. There's a pretty much constant acceleration due to gravity. Um, on the Earth, in the metric system, it's 9.81 meters per second squared. In the English system, it's 32.2 .2 feet per second squared. Okay? So weight is the force with which gravity pulls on an object and towards the center of the Earth. Mass is the amount of atomic material. Gravity is the acceleration due to gravity equal to these constant values. So is a slug is a slug mass equal to a pound mass then? No? No. The slug is uh now let's see yeah, the units here in the English system, which are called imperial, the force is a pound. Yeah. The acceleration is in feet per second squared. The mass is kind of a funny unit. It's called a slug. A slug is about this 32.2 pounds if you're on Earth. It's a large mass uh, to deal it's with. A very large mass. Yeah, it, it just comes right out of the units. So one pound is one slug times one foot per second squared. Will we ever use uh, pound mass? No, I don't. Uh, they're not used a whole lot, and they're, they get a little confusing because you got to throw a a factor of 32.2 into the calculations. So I don't use those. I use slugs. And I think that's pretty common. It's the native mass unit in the English system. In the metric system, it's newtons, kilograms, and meters per second squared. With a newton being a kilogram meter per second squared. Okay. So yeah, just uh, I guess the thing with slugs, just don't think about it. Just just if you use feet and seconds and pounds, you'll get slugs out. Okay. Now before we get into this too much, though, let's look at friction. <coughs> now friction is a force that resists sliding. There's two types of friction actually: dry friction, which is probably the one if you've taken physics, you've dealt with. There's also lubricated friction, which mechanical engineers get into a bit. We're just going to look at the dry friction, okay? Lubricated friction depends mostly on the oils that you use. Um, dry friction depends on the force perpendicular to the sliding surface. It's called the normal force, N or Fn. It also depends on the roughness of the surfaces, which is described by the coefficient of friction, which is mu. So the force of friction max is mu times Fn. And that's as high as friction can go, mu times Fn. So if we've got this um, object here that weighs 40 newtons, and we push on it with 30 newtons, what we would do first would be to set up a statics equation to find the normal. That's what you want to find to find the friction, find the normal force. So sum of Fy is zero, that's negative 40 for the weight, plus the normal force, which is the reaction. The normal is 40 newtons. If the coefficient of friction is 0.25, you take the 40, times 0.25. And what you'd get for the force of friction would be 10 newtons. That's what the friction would be. Okay. So the net force on the thing would be the 30 newtons you're pushing with minus the 10 for friction. be 20 newtons. So there's going to be a 20 Newton force pushing that box to the right, a net force of 20 Newtons. Okay. We're good with that? Okay. 
Now let's look at another example here. Um, now there's a couple coefficients of drive friction. There's static, mu sub s. That's used before there's any sliding. And then there's kinetic, mu sub k. That's used when there is sliding. Generally speaking, mu sub s is bigger than mu sub k. It takes a little bit more of a push to get something to move than it does to keep it moving. Now keep in mind that friction is what I call a reactive force. It reacts to how hard you push. Okay. So in this case here, why don't you find the friction? What's the friction acting on this box? Let's take a minute and do that. So what's the maximum or what what's the friction going to be? Yeah, it's going to be 30 because all we're pushing with is 30. Now the friction can go up as high as 40, but it's only going to hit 30 because we're pushing with 30. The friction itself will cause the box to fly across the. Yeah, right. The friction if if we took the friction to 40, the box would go to the left which obviously it's not going to do because we're pushing to the right. So keep in mind that this mu fn stuff is maximum. That's as high as it can go. All right, so be a little careful with that. Okay. So the friction could go as high as 40, but it doesn't need to. It only has to go up to 30. And this will come into play later in the class. We'll deal with some of this stuff. Where you have to be a little careful about how you use friction. You just can't always assume it equals mu fm. That can get you into trouble sometimes. Okay? So it just reacts is what it does. Okay. We good with that? Say so we got mu is equal to 0 0.2. I'm just making this one up. And let's say we're going to push on this thing with uh, 80 pounds. And let's say this thing weighs 50 pounds. What's the maximum possible friction?
18 pounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just remember when I was in school, I, I always just, just take the weight and multiply that by mu, and that was a mistake. Take the time to find the normal, okay? Because if, you, if you're on an angle or if you got a force pushing down on the block, you want to include that. That's going to influence the normal. So remember to do that, okay? So just a bit on friction there. We'll be using this um, a good bit now in different ways that we study this stuff and look at it. Okay. Now let's have a look at um, at just some basic F equals M A stuff. We'll do this got a couple minutes, so we'll just look a little bit at this. Now here's how I like to handle this. Find the acceleration of the block. Mu is zero, so we're not going to deal with friction. We're pushing on it with 80 pounds, and the thing weighs 300 pounds. And this isn't in your packet or anything. I'm just making this up. Um, all right, now the basic way you analyze this stuff is you take F on the left, and you equate that to MA. So remember that you need MA when you're doing this. You need to have the mass on the right. All right, now what that means is you need the mass. Okay, now what the mass is, is the weight over G, okay, because weight is mass <coughs> times G. So to solve for mass, it's weight over G. So you want to get a mass, okay? And that's going to be the 300 pounds divided by G, and that's 32.2 feet per second squared. So that'll get you the mass. And as I was saying, as long as you're in pounds, feet, and seconds, you're going to get slugs out. So don't worry too much about the units on this stuff. If you stay in standard units, you're good. So that's 9.32, and the units on this for mass is slugs. Okay. So that's the mass. Now the way to approach this stuff is, and this is how I'll do it, and this is how I will explain it. I can't speak to how you learned it in physics, so you know I don't know, but this is how I'll do it. <clears throat> On the left are the forces and weights. That's just like statics on the left, okay? Anything you did in statics, that goes on the left. On the right is what we're going to change, because now we're going to do dynamics. In statics, sum of F is zero, but in dynamics, it's MA. So I keep putting all my static stuff on the left, then I just put the dynamic stuff on the right. That's how I do this. Okay. So I get the mass, it's 9.32 slugs. Okay, I'm going to get F equals MA. F is what I call the static side. MA is what I call the dynamic side. Watch your signs when you're doing this stuff. Everything goes on its proper side of the equation. It gets the proper sign, and everything will be fine when it works out, okay? So what I'll do there, I'll go F equals MA. F, what I would put in statics, would just be 80 pounds. It doesn't equal zero anymore now. It equals MA. So that'll be 9.32A, and I can solve for A. 8.59 feet per second squared. Okay. So are we doing all right with that? 
And that's how I'll set them up and that's how I'll do them. I'll talk about the static side and the dynamic side. Okay. So I get the mass and slugs. F equals MA. The force in this case is just 80 pounds. And then MA is uh, mass, 9.32 times the unknown A, and I'll solve for A. So static side gets forces and weights. Dynamic side gets the masses and accelerations. That's how I do that. All right. So how about 172 and 3 do Friday, okay? They're relative motion problems is what they are. Remember to get that homework turned into today, right? Okay, so call it good.